We'll just hit record. And then it will actually record oh my both God. ends. It's being recorded. Mm -hmm. So hit Oh, continue. and you post it later? So the video will, I don't know when the video will come out. We might throw them on YouTube down the road. It's going to be mostly just all audio, though. Um, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I just started live streaming mine because I have a restream that goes to like all the networks at once. And then I try, sometimes I cut pieces out, but it's, sometimes it doesn't work, the, the cut thing. You have to like record your screen. Okay. It's weird. How interesting. Well, then we can, we can dive into it. Um, and what I can do is I can cut into this. I can actually record separately a intro. Um, basically introducing you. And so it doesn't kind of make your live stream seem funny. I don't know. So sort of what do you want to do? Or we can just oh. jump into it, but it's kind of funny That's now. Fine. I didn't, I know I've seen your videos. You, like you have, I don't know how many YouTube videos you have, but it's a that lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. I think, I'm not sure. It's yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like to, uh, I, don't know, I guess I just kind of like make it loosey goosey and you know, I like to have a silly goose time. <laughs> yeah. More of like, I've seen so many like comedy podcasts be like so successful compared to like literally all of the rest of them, unless you're like a, a spiritual leader or something that I just like just watch those and then I was like try to replicate whatever they're doing. But... No, that's not bad. Do you do so? Do you have your own podcast then? Uh, I just I just run everything through my my or brand just name. live stream. I, I was doing a uh, a two uh, simulator podcast with an ex of mine, <laughs> where she's gone. Mm -hmm. So um, and then I've had like so many other people like tell me that they wanted to come on and do it, like my neighbor and one of my other friends. But I just need to find like people that are like you know they treat motorsports like it's like a, some type of religion. And they just want to do it all the time because I just I drive every day on a simulator at least you know for like an hour, but sometimes way more. Okay, well that's cool. Well, so so to be to begin um, with the podcast, let's I want to have you give the like give like the listeners a, a brief introduction of yourself, um, Brandon Raimondi. Where does Raimondi come from? It's uh, Italian. I thought, but they they changed it at like the border patrol, or if you call it the uh, okay. Ellis Island type thing. Yep, because the R A Y is not Italian at all. Yeah, it was it was Rai, Mondi, like before. So they just changed the R A Y from R A I. Mm -hmm. But then, but I'm changing it again because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've had so many people. I, I always tell them my name in person or over the phone and they can't spell it. And it's like frustrating for them and for me. Cause I'm like, well, it basically rhymes with like the, the like middle part of my last name. So just so they know it's an O and an I'm. So I just say Brendan Raymond now. Oh. Yeah. And it's kind of sounds cool. It makes you sound like some type of like uh soap opera, like guy, you know, Brendan right. Raymond. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> or it just it just rhymes so it's easier to uh remember it mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense it's a good name and it's, uh i've been to port i've been to italy and italy's a beautiful place very italian um oh you are right saying, no i'm not i'm french, oh. <laughs> I I'm french. Oh, okay i thought you're, oh you're saying it, italy's a very italian place yeah i've been there yeah. too yeah uh so our family's from a bruzy okay and then cool. we visited there and then we went to Rome too and saw the Colosseum. Yes. Was, yeah, isn't that, isn't that cool? That's a cool place to visit. You got if anybody's list, like anybody that hasn't taken the chance, you gotta go visit the Colosseum. Like it's it's beautiful. It's like it has its own beauty with, with history. I mean, here in the US we have some some good rich history and like just of happenings, things that occurred, and you can go and see a lot of the art in and like the museums and a lot of the stuff, especially here on the East coast where I'm at, but like when you go back to Rome and you see like the age of everything, 
and yeah. know it's thousands of years old. It's incredible. And you can tell, you can tell it's thousands of years old. It's not, not natural, but the beauty of it. And what I'm describing is the beauty of, of the man-made, like the craftsmanship is so neat. It yeah. was definitely something different in that time. Yeah. We saw, uh, we were, we had a tour guide and he was taking us around and I think, I think we we're in like some rolling hills. It looked like a, an actual postcard, like, uh, it was a, uh, vineyard mm -hmm. but um there's like a little museum there and we're looking at all these like beautiful marble sculptures and he takes me he's like hey brendan i bet you like this and it was a, a marble like ass like just just the butt and like they had broken off all the rest of it so like sat down on it and like we were taking pictures and, he was, and then you know they acted like you know don't don't break it even that's already broken um, right but then it was actually like it was almost like a scrap pile of like these artifacts because i think they just figured like we'll put all this stuff in like the the lawn over here on the side like we don't really care about this as much as the inside it's like all preserved with like on a nice glass or something mm -hmm. it was strange to see yeah like it's different once it gets That's that the... broken they just throw it out <laughs> um. <laughs> so you you mentioned a minute ago brendan that uh you've you do a simulator every single day. You have YouTube videos of doing it. Sorry, it'll click back on. Um, it's you're weird. A, you're it's, a wire. Well, it's every 27 minutes, 28 minutes, it'll kick off like that. It's very strange. Um, it, anyways. It's a software thing. It is. It's a software thing for sure. Um, so you do a driving simulator. Um, I guess like have you basically tell the listeners like what oh there he is a, a drive a steering wheel right in front of you yeah <laughs> and you got a lot of youtube videos of you driving like using it it's pretty cool watching you you race that route or like i guess in the simulation a rally car um so what do you do on a day on a daily basis like what is your day-to-day -day basis or basically with practicing and and with racing Does that makes um yeah, I just pretty much just complete my errands as fast as possible, and and then uh, continue driving and like practicing in the simulator. It's like a very much a full time thing. But, really? Um, yeah. So I guess yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be able to do that for a long time. It's been like, well, I, when I started doing simulation driving, I think it was like. 14 or something like, so got, like an xbox wheel and then we progressed from there and i got the logitech g25 which i still have pieces of it over there that thing took a hammer and lasted a long time this is not a this is not a paid endorsement though i'm just saying oh, no, no no for sure <laughs> and uh and then yeah i just kept getting upgrades and this one's the uh the fanatec dd2 which I actually just like took a loan out for they're doing a championship for uh I think you, you could win up to like 25 grand so then i was doing even more like i wasn't doing any errands i was just waking up driving until i fell asleep and it was like oh my gosh possible. so i don't know it's like 12 13 14 hours a day so is that you would you can say that's your occupation like what is your occupation then uh i'm well i do digital marketing oh yeah Okay. So we're kind of like very similar in that aspect. Uh huh. It's like and, uh, creating, you know, like banners or flyers or videos, um, like showcasing tech, or and then I do it for myself too, which is I could be uh, probably doing more of that, but I just practice so much. It's kind of the, more of the focus. So who do you do it for? Do you have like your own company that you're doing it or do you work for somebody doing it? Uh, my, my father has a company. It's in Got New it. York. Well, it's in Raleigh now too. It's uh, called Employee Network Incorporated. Okay. Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where are you actually? New Jersey. So, oh, cool. yep. Just, uh, I'm an out 45 minutes away from Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Is it near Hoboken? Uh, so Hoboken is up in like the New York area, like on basically up in that river area between 
uh, Newark and New York City. So actually, I could be wrong. I don't know. I've never, I know Hoboken's <laughs> up in that area. <laughs> I don't, there's so many strange names in this place. I have no idea, yeah. but I know Hoboken is in that area. I just don't know if it's classified in New York or if it's classified in New Jersey. And nobody ever gives me a straight answer. It's classified by it's yeah, it's that's what it seems like they don't, they don't want you to know <laughs> yeah that, that's crazy i didn't you know i didn't realize that you do digital marketing so how long have you been actually racing then in I, you race one you've raced rally right mm-hmm. uh how long have you been racing utvs oh so the utvs excuse me because i'm kind of don't really keep track of time as much as I probably could, but uh, <laughs> I've had this UTV now, I think for four and a half years, okay. if I'm not mistaken, maybe, or maybe four, just flat out. <laughs> I've been flat out the whole time, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, and why well, I, I did, it's, I basically just fully committed. I have, I have a toy hauler, right? And I've been figuring out how to live in the toy hauler and then i have my utv that i could put in there and i live i moved out to the desert um i I was in la before and new york and then i came back after i got some like a bunch of money and then i bought the utv the rv and now i moved right to like the basically at the border because i thought i'd be going back to la a lot to do like other like filming and like comedy type stuff. But now mostly just doing uh, like filming the UTV stuff out here. And because it's all legal, you can go pretty much every direction for like hundreds, maybe, well, yeah, like thousands of miles. And there's no speed limits. There's no like cops there's barely any people out too like to be in the hmm. way and you can see uh, pretty much as far as like your eye you can see because um, as long as you're not like maybe on like a mountain edge which i don't really do that by myself as much anyway but um so yeah i just it's just like a it's just a literal full commitment because um i didn't want any excuse not to be able to make it to this type of race or doing some type of media because this now allows me to drive to any spot, like kind of much like Ken Block does. And like you go to like some beautiful vacation location, like in Utah with like, you know, bright blue water and like the side of a cliff. And there's like, you know, weird catacombs and stuff. And we, I just basically just hunt those out, you know, and uh, all the classified stuff. <laughs> and, uh, we break in there and start drifting around and get, hopefully getting some good footage, you know? Okay. Yeah. You've been doing that for four years. That's, that's interesting. So your, your story is quite interesting where you've, you're, you drive simulator and I'm assuming the simu- driving the simulator is just to maintain practice. Um, you don't get, but you, you kind of alluded to a possible winning of $25,000. I'm assuming that's a competition within the uh simulation realm i'm not really familiar with like the gaming and stuff like that so is that kind of where you that's coming from you can win money by doing certain races on it through a simulation yeah i mean there there's these challenges like popping up more and more but a lot of them them on uh so they i think they have wrc has one with like big ben games because they made that game together, uh, or I guess it's it's basically a simulator at that point. Um, and so they, that's, I think WRC9 they're up to. And they used to do it where it was more just, almost just for like social media recognition. Okay. Which is cool. But now they actually did start um, offering like a full ride uh, on a, I think it was a front wheel drive. I don't know if it was a, I can't remember what car maybe a Renault or something but they would give you like a team if you won and but they had a uh, an age limit on it which i think it was only from you can only be 17 to like 24 or something like five hmm. so they're 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 just looking for someone that um was already really good maybe they've been brought up like by 
some maybe their parents or some uh, relative or sponsor and like made to be a champion and then they would just flourish them for the rest of their life which was cool and that was called uh, star if I star search or something okay. dancing with the stars <laughs> no uh, and then dirt rally uh, 2.0 it's like kind of like in my mind, that's like the new bar for rally simulators, even though it's weird because you have WRC, you think would be like the most accurate. But um, to me, it just felt kind of sloshy. Hmm. Uh, like like you're driving a, a heavier vehicle than you are like a truck car. But uh, um, they really nailed it. I mean, and before that, it was just like Richard Burns rally and I racing. They used to have up tournaments up to a hundred thousand dollars. I guess they were like the originators. Mm -hmm. So you can find like uh, just like basically like contests like here and there, but um, I think it's because of uh, the rise of live streaming, with uh, especially iRacing, yeah, and and uh, just gamers in general doing tournaments. It's becoming more and more popular, and it is kind of what you were saying before. It is kind of. Uh, bringing people from just ball sports to this new realm of like, e like online. Yeah. Esports or uh, action sports. Cause they stream those too. Um, Red Bull does at least. Right. So it's no. cool. Yeah. That's interesting. So people that are, are interested in, I guess in that realm of kind of like what you're doing. In fact, I had no idea that even existed. Like what you do. I didn't even know people actually did that. I just, when oh, i saw it. videos of you doing it i'm like is this what he does for work like is he paid to to do this to like test things out for people and and run these programs and run these simulations and make sure everything's working out um yeah I'm the architect from the matrix yeah <laughs> <laughs> <That's> right <laughs> but it, yeah. it's cool to, to hear that there's some cool competition some things that are changing uh in in esports as well more coming towards what you do uh since i i'm not sure how old are you i'm 31 now yeah oh you're my age um how old are you 31 oh okay same yeah <laughs> usually people say that they're like i'm 34 26 I'm like, oh. yeah yeah <laughs> so 31 so you've been doing it for oh shoot seven or um yeah 17 years you've been practicing simulation which is crazy long time so yeah. should, basically you're telling me that like not quite when it first came out but pretty close to when it first came out because playstation was out in the early 90s or mid 90s something like that so that's interesting now having this kind of experience you were able to work your way into work uh like getting on a team so like team valvoline you've been on team valvoline i'm not sure if you're still on team valvoline or not um you're wearing a a shirt a basically looks like a team oh. member shirt that has red bull and is this uh, team valvoline in here? no no no, no it's team valvoline it was a photo that i saw on your social media oh that was i think that was referring to one of those uh those contests oh yeah okay. interesting so i guess maybe not but so red bull infinity renault i see that on the side as well like you have a whole bunch of different names on there. Papa John's. So well, let's talk about what you're... <laughs> He's discovering his shirt. <laughs> He's like, what's on this? <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, the F1 team shirt. Okay. Oh, there... oh, oh, this... Oh, Pepe Jeans. Oh, that's Pepe Jeans. <laughs> Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Papa John's is on here. Yeah, oh, that's funny. So why, yeah. like, what do you do in the rally Fresh. world, rally at realm? Um, so I, I've pretty much been, well, I've been doing rally cross for the longest. And then we did rallies in New York. And then we just did, well, I was just telling you, I did a rally cross here just this last weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's like, a, obviously the freshest point of my mind, but I thought of some other stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so rally was uh like the the largest focus and then with side by sides like literally taking over like the world 
at such a at such an alarming rate. We need to stop them. No, um, it's it's kind of cool because I've been seeing more side by sides being allowed because they weren't allowed for a long time. They just I guess they just wouldn't. Uh, they was like they thought it was unfair and they wouldn't make a class for them. But now they're allowing them to show up at these rally crosses and get practice. And then um, they're going to be. I've seen uh, one guy do a uh, rally with it. I think it. I think it was an ARA rally, which is uh, David Sturks. He's right here in LA. Hmm. So basically, yeah, I've been building uh, my UTV to do rallies with. Okay. To kind of like, you know, tie the two things in together. It's all about making like, you know, bigger and better connections. And having Absolutely. a, having something not be lost from the, you know, the evolution that happened prior, but making it like twice as good with yeah. all the history and the future, you know. So have you, have you worked with other companies of, like as a sponsored athlete, sponsored racer? Uh, well, I've, I've done the, the television show, uh, Ken Academy. That was with Ford. Wow. And Detroit speed and, and, uh, NBC sports network. Okay. So how did you land something like that? Uh, a lot of just n not losing belief in myself. <laughs> that was like the main part. Cause I had, uh, I think it was like the first year I didn't get on, but it was it was kind of weird like maybe that was meant to happen because it, it was almost like like kind of like the, the ninja warrior type thing where they just or uh mud warrior where they like <laughs> they just kind of beat on you and like make you go through like obstacle courses like you're in the military okay and uh and you know like us drivers were just used to just like sitting in a chair and just like pushing out you know legs and arms like as fast as we can it's not really about all the rest of stuff but um yeah maybe that works for f1 <laughs> but yeah and i i didn't get in the first year or first season i guess you call it but the the next season um i got a call after attending like a, a driving test at new jersey motorsports park so that was really cool they had like like really thousands of people i think it was like ten thousand people showed up or more holy cow to all these different um testing tracks and they had us just like hop in like uh it could be anyone could have signed up they just hopped into uh uh i think it was a ford focus rs or uh fiesta and drive down this pretty it was almost like a third of the track and we were probably going like 110 or something. And during the test, I actually did get sideways and I, I caught it um, with uh, a portion structure guy uh, next to me. And I guess he recognized that you know, this guy could probably do whatever he needed to do for some show. And then, and then we even did a drift like uh, practice too, where we had this is pretty crazy. We had uh, the pro formula drift driver. I'm trying to think of his name. He's got like, he's, he's got like an orange beard. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Um, what he, he was driving a Nissan three, three seventy Z and he does all the other stuff. Um, but he was the one that was our instructor. And that was, that was pretty trippy. I mean, he, but he wasn't really, hadn't been an instructor before so, so didn't have as much input as the um the porsche guy but still it was like he knew exactly what um had to change to make the thing work so that was cool i mean i'm surprised they didn't have more of that uh but well i guess on the show they did because yeah i was with von gittin and he taught me how to drift mm -hmm. so yeah and he was a he was a great instructor he really could explain like the the physical aspects and the, some of the uh, psychological stuff too about car maneuvering and uh, you know, being able to execute something like that that hard. Right. And that was pretty new to me too at the time with rear wheel drive. I was used to just basically drifting around all wheel drive. So it's a huge help because I don't know which 
part of the sim you saw, but yeah, I still practice that today, the rear wheel stuff. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't tell you what really the, the big difference between the two. Like, like, I know the difference mechanically, but in drift and watching that kind of stuff, I, I couldn't really tell you, like, the the challenges between the two. What, what challenge you face in a two-wheel rear-wheel drive versus a four-wheel drive, I just wouldn't know. But I, I saw the last one I saw simulation was was with a WRX. I think it was kind of old, but it was with a WRX. So I was like, hmm. it's very interesting. Like I said, it's interesting to see you do all these simulations and, and not really, um, without really knowing like what you do, like your background. But it's cool to find out that your background is like, you know, literally you practice all day long. That's what you do as a job basically. So then you prep yourself so you can actually go race and, and perform as such. But the aspect also of marketing plays into your life where you, you uh, do digital marketing with like as a family venture that you guys have, which is super cool. So talking about marketing, marketing like, fam. yeah, <laughs> talking about marketing and, uh, and action sports, how are you able to implement like the marketing within action sports, like using social media to your advantage, using it as like a, a for what you need? Oh, your, your voice changed, but it actually got louder. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It just switched from one mic to the other. So oh, we're back on the old mic. Than mine is. Um, yeah. So I basically, I, I kind of treat it like I was trying to think of that earlier, actually, right before we called, but I kind of treat it like it's, it's, uh, it's like we're artists, you know, even though it is about, or it was about the time and, you know, uh, just looking a certain way. Um, now I just, I kind of see it as like a spectacle and I've been doing like a lot of marketing around the spectacle of, of, you know, what, like what something maybe if you're a racer, you think of like something that amps you up in your head. Like, well, obviously, with like, uh, I guess we alluding to the example of the, the Jim Connor videos, Ken Block stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he really kind of changed the game as far as marketing because it was more about, you know, performing at the peak level than always just finishing. I guess he kind of. When he first started, he was crashing more than most people. But that's kind of the same thing with like uh, Colin McRae was it was just it was just such like an unbelievable thing to watch, like a like an actual legend being formed. I guess at that time they hadn't known until after how big he would be. Um, after he was gone, unfortunately, but um, people really took took the stages and and wanted to see someone that could make the absolute maximum performance come out of a car where you're literally like just milking every single inch of the track and of the tires and the brakes and the accelerator and uh maybe not exactly playing it as safe as uh some people would to you know to try and protect themselves or the car or the sponsors mm -hmm. so with sim racing i guess that's basically like what it allows you to do is i I don't drive, you know, like, I, was, I don't know, it's like half percent. <laughs> I drive over my talent level sometimes, like, but only slightly, but, or more if I can, you know, I do the, I bet 150%. No, um, I do, I do over the maximum of my level so that I can figure out what's the, the top of the top, you know, like, where does it, where does it end essentially so a lot of the times um I'll, I'll end up crashing maybe more in the beginning but then once i get into the, the flow of being at that level i can just kind of reel it out but that's why i do it every day because it takes like some it's like that warming up hmm. where your brain's just not you can't keep up with all that stuff going on and you gotta it's like uh, yeah, like hopping back on a like a skis or you said you do snowmobiles. Yep. You too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and uh when you first get out there it's just it's just not happening <laughs> right yeah it takes a minute to get like like if you have this flow uh this original flow when you're riding for a long time and then you stop for years and getting back into it you know you, it's as, it is it's, it's like riding a bicycle but it's still different you're still not going to be right at that peak performance they used to be at so you, yeah. you do you warm up and you start practicing all over again and try to get to that point where you used to be so i guess i guess i kind of sidetracked there but that yeah exactly what i was saying but to come back to your point was that once you have uh basically like the 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 peak performance that you want then you can then um put that online and just showcase it to people and like really show them like i guess I mean, if, if, yeah, sometimes I do like just show people just this earlier stuff where I'm just kind of messing up till I get to a point where I can do it. And, uh, and then it's just, I show them like the replay and you, there's so many different angles and it's always maybe a little bit of different weather or a different car mm -hmm. and to master it is really cool. And then it, it, it's basically, yeah, like the art part of it is you're showing someone in slow motion or full speed these crazy angles that might be hard to you have to hire like a you know really expensive uh marketing or development team to get these shots so it's all it's it's pretty much like the perfect way to train to do online uh action sports marketing for racing because it just allows you to crash a lot <laughs> and and you don't have to, you know, hire a bunch of guys and sit around and wait for you to do the thing that uh, I could just, you know, grab my UTV and go do after practicing it for however long it takes to master that course or that that car. Mm -hmm. Usually, like a week and a half, if you're being realistic. But wow, yeah. trying to actually get it and then apply it into the real world—that is interesting very interesting so using using marketing um you utilize your social media to well i guess what do you do what do you do to utilize your social media with marketing and your and what you want to accomplish oh um well yeah a bit, yeah so i clip a lot of these um like very specific heightened experiences mm -hmm. for people and myself to review like how the how is that even possible like, how did i do that <laughs> but um so I'll, I'll try to make like a lot of the people's attention spans have gotten shorter like from like these like scrolling apps like tiktok and instagram and stuff but i try to um like also believe in like the podcast thing where you can do an app a longer episode so yeah i, I do like a streaming part of me driving for a long time and trying to entertain people with comedy or just some new philosophy. And then I clip that and put it on like Instagram okay, or YouTube or Facebook so that it can be shared like through groups or through other people's platforms. And that kind of just like spreads the virus. <laughs> I put I put a little computer virus on there. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it's just uh, it's just the best way to access people. Well, yeah, with, well, I mean, with Facebook, they have uh, groups of like hundreds of thousands of people on there. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got yeah. billions of people on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So it is cool to see yeah. how many people get or find these things. Like even with you, your aspect, like you're saying you haven't um really been that knowledgeable i find that really interesting because th that just that's just kind of like a different whole different perspective it's like wow if i haven't been exposed to any type of like simulator racing yet then or like how did you come across it you know was it just through me or just oh. like randomly <laughs> yeah so like simulations of i've always known about simulations like always um i tried my hand once on a i don't know what it was but it was like an xbox simulator i will it was steering wheel and a foot pedal basically for yeah. i couldn't tell you what the game was just i think it was some rally game but i i've actually never had the interest in games 
like in doing that kind of, and sitting in front of a television or a, a computer for a long period of time um, until recently when I started getting into marketing and understanding marketing and how it actually is a asset to where I want to go in my life. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just, I've had, let's say kind of like motorcycles and four wheelers and stuff like that. Like once I've seen it and I've handled it, it gets stuck in my head and I know about it and I can understand it better or I understand it. Like I understand the metrics. And then as I, as I continue on in my life, I'll refer to different examples in my life and then refer back to, Oh, well, it's kind of like this. And like, I, I guess it's a more of an educated guess most of the time. Um, but it's not a full, like, Oh yeah, I know type of thing. And I do that with a lot of stuff. Like when you see a bike on the street, you're like, Oh yeah, that's like a 96. Right. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? It's like, dude, it's just an educated guess. <laughs> I really don't know what, what exactly. year that was going to be been following you this <laughs> past six weeks. You're driving around. That's right. <laughs> trying to find your, see what your little VIN said on it, <laughs> what year it says. So stick the brake lines out too. That's right. <laughs> like right. what? <laughs> <laughs> so to, to finish up, you know, out of respect to your time and my time, um, oh, I want to finish up on, on talking about sponsors and working with companies. Uh, you've had opportunities to work with a few companies and, you know, film really, which is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. So I guess what is your perspective about sponsorships and how to utilize your social media or, your, or leverage it to help the sponsorship or help the the company grow so yeah i have the same like ideals as you do with as far as like the dream like the aspect of it is uh i like to think as big as possible with as many people as possible um i think this is mostly what most companies that have gotten that big had to do to to the R unless it was just like completely by accident they were like oh we want to keep it small and within the family but <laughs> usually yeah they're thinking we're going to sell this to like every single person is going to have like a can in their hand with our brand on it but um for me i'm actually i'm kind of trying to build like a lifestyle that's uh as sustainable as possible where I'm not just doing it as a hobby or some type of like, they call it the weekend warrior Mm -hmm. um, where I'm actually living it. Uh, So, well, I could have done it today, but tomorrow I'm actually moving to uh, this place called Cal city and they have, it's gotta be the world's biggest like uh, off road park because they have a, a combined 261 miles of trails. Wow. And they're all uh, like military, they're military grade, military graded. Am I, am I boring you? No, sorry, dude. I, I was uh, literally, I'm yawning so much because I was at the oh. beach for five hours today, hitting the waves, trying to learn how to bodyboard. And it beat me up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those, those that's why i'm burnt and everything like that so like i am literally i'm beat i'm so beat right now yeah. so i keep yawning because i'm not breathing well <laughs> yeah like it's oxygen to the brain yeah yep did, so did you, please uh, ignore ignore my my yawns it's it's pretty bad but i know sorry did you do one of the uh the the most famous boogie board tricks where you front flip into the sand and do like a, <laughs> a roll no i kind of forward yeah, no, I I didn't. I mean, this is my second time being to the beach since I've moved here. Yeah. So I have literally zero experience doing or playing in the water my entire life. I'm not even from here. I'm from Utah. Born and raised Utah, Idaho. Oh, cool. My wife is from here. So that's why we're here. Right. So I'm learning a whole new world aspects of, of what it's like to live next to the beach and the sports, the action sports you can um you can participate in out here. Yeah. It's, it's different. New Jersey's a lot like California, uh, with the regulations and stuff like that, but you yeah, make so do with what you yeah. got. Yeah. 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 New York yeah. too. Yeah. There's no There's, laws out on the water. 
<laughs> no, yeah, fortunately. So you, you do what you can. So yeah, so sorry about the whole yawning thing. It's not oh, that I'm bored. It's literally just I'm beat. So and I got an I got a yeah. meeting tonight at ten AM or at ten. So and it's our I guess it's six o'clock your time right now. So yeah. at seven o'clock your time I got another meeting. Oh right on. Okay. Cool. So anyways yeah, to finish up what you're saying. Luck. Yeah. Um Oh yeah, so I'm try I'm trying to like get it. I'm trying to get it. So I'm doing uh, not just or like less of the simulation stuff, but more of like the real deal. So once I move to this spot, uh, and we're also putting a lot of monetary value into land there, and uh, it's going to be a garage. So we'll have a place to fix all this stuff and like build oh, cool. concept vehicles, like I was talking about before, like the like the uh the batmobile that's electric no um <laughs> and it's gonna be it's just gonna be a whole different well life for me because i feel like i've been trying searching for something like that for many many years like i moved by myself to florida twice different spots mm. and then to la twice but um my family's moved all around today uh, my sister and brother lived in jersey too and then, okay uh, in, in the hobo kinfolk area but and so i mean i've experienced a lot of places i've never really found a place that was this suited like and i've been to rally schools too and they didn't seem like they were i think they're about like a sixth the size maybe smaller. wow and their roads usually aren't as wide or as smooth and uh there's also it's kind of ironic too or synchronic that there's another craze going on where they're taking these like cheaper cars and buying them and i had this idea actually before i had seen anything about it and uh they're like just driving them through like these wide open back trail roads and they're uh kind of became really famous um the gamblers hmm. so i was gonna do kind of like a mix of that to like because I think they, they probably have like 100,000 members now. It's, it's getting up there. But um, to kind of like build a community portion there where we could sustain like a bunch of RVs and travel together and race together or just like shoot, like mess around and shoot like gym kind of videos and have like a like my whole team uh, for the media aspect and for mechanical aspects, like basically like a traveling like nitro circus, like, but, mm -hmm. um, full time. <laughs> like, it doesn't really end, and uh, it's a cool area because they've had uh, kind of like off road. It's almost like an off road festival, but it's called Wasteland. Have okay, ever, I don't know if you ever seen anything about that. It's no. like apocalyptic, uh, a festival or post apocalyptic, I guess. We are post apocalyptic now. It's the last year, but um, it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. it's, <laughs> it's uh, it was like a mock one where they do like a music festival, quote unquote. But the car show really was like the biggest aspect because they would take these crazy vehicles and chop them up and like rust them up. But they put like, I've seen some of the cars that are probably like $170,000 or more. Oh my gosh. Because they put like King Shocks and like a supercharged LS motor in it. And uh, and it was just kind of crazy to see like these movie replica cars too, but that was all done in that same city. Um, they're on another side, like on another piece of land. But uh, I was thinking to myself, like I could just, you know, have some of these people or the motorsports people come and live out where I'm buying land out there. And then we could just do motorsports every day. and. At that point, you could live stream it because it would just be going on around you at all times. Like they have, they still have some people off roading there. Mm -hmm. But um, and then that would allow the it would allow more practice than a pro, because pros they get seat time, but they um they have to like reserve you know like a, a track and that's expensive, or they have to pay for um like the block of the whole road with like an ambulance and police and all that and all the team and they kind of already have that stuff there but um it would just it would just allow someone to drive every day or every other day instead of like maybe like once a month or once every other month 
Mm -hmm. you know and that's and then you don't have to like figure out how to get yourself going um like we were talking about earlier like getting take the training wheels off your when you first get back on the bike because you're just automatically driving like max attack all the time i mean even the roads to get around the town like get groceries you could technically drift <laughs> would be kind of a cool place to to end up i mean it's kind of similar to what we want to eventually like the big vision that aaron has uh for the action sports club is is building a big community kind of like that um for enthusiast athletes and a place where they can learn to get or train and learn all sorts and certain or all sorts of aspects of, of how to be a, uh, an athlete and get become or start to move up the levels and really crush it in their field. Like that's very similar to what our big vision is as well. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, and it's, it would just be so much more fun like you know obviously if, if we could meet up and do this together because well i have that's why i set up my thing with the two simulators i'm going to get another rv actually and more simulators but um maybe a motion one too that would help because simulating driving is actually harder without the motion right but um but uh and then we'd have like uh people that can meet up and if they weren't comfortable with you know driving the real car out in you know the, the scary danger land <laughs> with all the fires no um they could just you know come in and drive and learn how to drive if it's their first time and then go out and you know test whatever they want in the real life or even like simulate it like you could have the same car and this and uh a, we could even 3d scan the ground <laughs> with drones or like yeah. a car and like create our surroundings like our surrounding track or rally track yep um with pavement or dirt so yeah and, and um have you guys been in any of those off-road festivals like um utv takeover no Facebook, not yet glamis and dumont where there's like sometimes like a hundred thousand people or two hundred thousand it's like absolutely like a record but it's just like i don't know <laughs> i haven't i haven't been either but uh i got offered to go to the last one my utv just broke so but um yeah, it just looks crazy. They have like, a, I think I saw a themed Star Wars one. I'm uh, sure for Halloween, or like you know, one one person put a big uh, land speeder shell over their UTV, <laughs> and then they they're like hanging off the edge, and they have like a Flintstone car. Yeah. So, so people are like, I mean, it's just crazy the amount of work and time they put in. Like, I mean, it, I guess it makes sense because it pays off like tremendously that one time a year. But imagine if you could do it where it's not just the one time, you know, like with Wasteland, it was only once a year too. And you're having it. So you're, while you're building stuff, people are watching you like on the internet and then they'll see your progression and then they see the final results and it's all one big festival, you know? Right. No, and that makes sense. I think the only problem or like, you know, not to, to automatically assume the hey. downside of it. Right. The, the conversations I've had though with people about um, action sports is it's it's a place where not everybody can do it and it's not very common. So it kind of that that part of it drives a lot of attraction to it as well. And that's um, something yeah. like having a a rally once a year, this big rally, like it's something that people can talk about and want to go to once a year or they can afford to go to once a year and then if you have a if you have something that is year round like it, it, i don't i know it won't be as popular you, everybody can knows that it just won't be as popular just because I'm, well i can go anytime it's kind of like when you have this really fascinating place like in your city for example like let's say an aquarium right in salt lake there's an aquarium there and you have it available. You can go there anytime you want, but only like half the population actually goes because like, well, I'll just go tomorrow type of thing, but tomorrow never comes. Right. Right. So having something so significant now, if they said, Oh, well the pot, the aquarium was only going to be here for three weeks and it's going to be gone, you know, we'll never be back. Then that's going to 
increase to like, oh, well, maybe 75% of Utah will, or the people in that area will actually go instead of the, the 50 or the 40, whatever the outcome really is. It's very interesting how the psychological or psychology will, will play in effect with these types of things with people. And, and that, that along goes along the lines of like sponsorships and working with companies, like how psych, like people look at work collaborating with companies and the gimme gimme people and the, the whole aspect of, because I'm good, I deserve it type of thing. Right. Where it's, we were going into a digital age where, yeah, you may be good, but if you can't talk to some, you can't talk to the people around you, if you can't represent the company properly, they're, they're likely not going to collaborate with you and do anything with you. And it's very interesting. It's very interesting. And a lot of people just don't understand that. And it's cool to meet somebody like you, Brendan, where you, you do get it because you're a marketer yourself for one, but you've been doing this for such a long time where you've, really love it like you like you mentioned before you eat breathe and literally sleep this work like what you're doing you love it so much yeah. i mean i i knew you were i figured you were in a trailer i was thinking like just a, a car hauler or something like that i was like well maybe that's where his setup is at because like you could see the background and stuff in some of your videos like hmm but now that you're like oh yeah well it's a fifth wheel i'm like ah oh, i mean or a trailer is like oh you know that makes a heck of a lot more sense but you said it's a toy hauler so you have that garage part of the the um the trailer where you can pull your side by side in and then take off yeah. and go wherever you want we, we sleep cool. together it's like my wife <laughs> <laughs> you have like the bunk bed that lowers down on top <laughs> yeah yeah we get real close that's cool i actually did do that when i first got it it was fun but um that's yeah cool. it's i did actually i did think of what you're saying too like um so the plan was to keep it like tight knit and then um, like having our, our own people like uh, that we can trust and have around and you know for the sake of like not getting like crazy people or thieves or right thieves or whatever you might run into out there with some trailer people but um, for the most part it would it would be you know yeah like fancy people with toy haulers and mm -hmm. expensive rides and uh, and then like every maybe maybe once a year or maybe twice a year we would have uh like a themed event yeah and the the idea that popped into my head is i was pretty obsessed have you seen the movie tron legacy the newer tron yeah yeah oh thank god okay <laughs> so i really like that too um and that's kind of cool because it's like it is the bridging between the like the digital world like being showcased as like basically simulated reality and I'm not saying that that's what's happening now, no. And that's just cool because it we were going to do that kind of theme where people could just throw like LED lights. They probably won't even have to like uh, tie into the, their their own car's electronics because they can just have batteries if they're just doing it for like a weekend or a week. Sure. And then um, you could just throw lights on yourself. They're like cheap as all hell. It's like 10 bucks for like 35 feet. Of like led rope and it lo it just makes everything look kind of like abstract and like kind of like you know very like trippy and mm -hmm. it's slightly like a like a cool dream so i thought and i've seen it before a couple times just like a couple cars excuse me, but i thought we could make something happen like that and in the desert it can get it gets pretty hot like hundreds sometimes but without the humidity so it's a weird heat but uh yeah so it's not as harsh but it's still there i mean if you don't have shade it's kind of hot so we, if we did it at night it feels fantastic out you know like really great uh there's like a slight perfect little breeze and it's like 75 and then we have all these cool lights and stuff but that would be the thing to draw people in if and if they liked our idea about you know kind of living a outdoor lifestyle and being in like glamping and like kind of like having these rv parks and rides like being our full focus then they could stay but otherwise yeah get the hell out of there yeah <laughs> no that's interesting i'm i'm rooting for you i think it'd be really cool to see a development like that happen and it'd be cool to visit and to spend time there and and anybody that's looking to 
kind of move it. Yeah. I got to have a trailer. I don't know, I got, no, one. I got well, I got two of them now. So oh, yeah. There you go. See? Stay in the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's looking to do that, then, like, this is a great opportunity for anybody to go do that. And sorry, I'm looking at your, your Facebook page. It says intro head gardener at Godspeed. <laughs> yeah. Like head gardener. Yeah, uh, that was one of the uh, the choices there is. I think it was the rest of them was just like vice president or CEO. And I kind of just make fun of my own like prestige. I make fun of how cool I am. I think I was, yeah, just, just a little simple gardener, you know, going out there making some fresh organic vegetables for my peoples <laughs> that's right i mean you do you have a pretty fair you have a fair fairly amount or a good amount of stuff on your your facebook page um racer racer ring rally x <laughs> champ x2 i mean comedian actor stunt driver drifter yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna even pronounce the last one <laughs> filts filitzer let's flirt oh a, a philosophizer a philosophizer no yeah wow. this is like how many philosophy getting getting deep into you know the yeah the status of our society and also just making kind of like a little slight mockery out of it to make it more entertaining so people kinda want like to J consume it you know kind of like what jp sears does yeah he's he's great he's very monotone <laughs> uh i like to kind of act out a little more like jim carrey you know like the spontaneous like outburst stuff or like yep. just, just like out there outlandish stuff but yeah jp sears is great yeah mm -hmm. he just talks like guy. this the whole time i know it cracks me up spiritual <laughs> af <laughs> that's right so brandon to to finish up let's have you tag yourself where people can find you and follow you i mean you got <laughs> you, you already have 4800 friends so not too many friends can you can add too many people on your facebook page but people can follow you on social media instagram uh if you have any other pages on facebook or if they even need some help with marketing they can definitely reach out yeah that's good that's good you created some uh, exclusivity they want they want to attend my facebook page that's right. All right, profile. Um, so it's all through God's speed, Brendan Raymond. It's also like another play on the whole, you know, existential sweet God speed uh, saying that people use. Best wishes to you all. And uh, yeah, pretty much make stuff every day, trying to uplift people, you know, make them less fearful, more positive, and, and uh, do that through motorsports. I do some cool. some shooting stuff we're gonna do like simulation shooting too and like real shooting so it's all basically a cross between doing it on a computer or doing it in real life so yeah interesting just haven't really started that yet just some practice so it's gonna be fun man <laughs> that's cool i'm excited for you man be fun yeah when did you move to uh new jersey may beginning of may yeah it's it's cool you're like in the the surf scene mm -hmm. yeah it's fun it's cool to go out there i mean it's not like california but like it's it's still there's still sun and it's still beach so yeah i, I live i don't know if you've ever heard of long beach island i mean there's long <laughs> island yeah there's long <laughs> island then there's long beach island which is down here in new jersey there's long beach too out here so yeah yep and it's almost like an island because it's surrounded by water on both sides. So okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, no, I haven't. No. So it's it's a it's a very popular place for New Yorkers, North Jerseyans, uh, Pennsylvanians. A lot of people in these surrounding states will come out to there to vacation for a couple weeks at a time, the whole summertime. Like there's a lot of houses out there and I mean, they're all the majority of them are, are million dollar homes. Um, like the when, what's that? Like the Hamptons with the Kardashian stay. Yeah. But I, I'm assuming so. Yes. I don't know much about them, but yeah. Seaside <laughs> Heights. Oh, you know, like I'm hurt. I'm sure you've heard of uh, Jersey shore. Yeah. GTL, Jim Tan laundry. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I, I have no idea. No, anyway, I don't watch it, but they're, uh, they live on, or like that party house was uh, very similar to what's down here, but that area 
I don't think that area is as nice. It's not nearly as nice as what it's down at Long Beach Island. In my opinion, I've been up to that area. It's not as nice, but I, that's my opinion. There's a lot of nice houses up in that area though. A lot. Yeah. But Long Beach Island, I think is way, is way nicer and it's a lot more regulated. So makes sense. But okay, dude, I'm stoked to share this with everybody. And I hope that everybody got some great value learning a little bit more about different aspects and in, in action sports and, and Brendan's able to kind of showcase a little bit about what he does and, you know, open up some more doors, some more ideas. And you know, that's what I love about the podcast. Sometimes we don't uh, like the value that we get out of it is a new idea that pops into our head. Like, wait a minute. I didn't think about that before. And a new, new creation can come from it. So even, even though the, the, our, the, this podcast is a little bit different than the rest of them it's still full of value in, in certain ways where people I think will get some interesting takeaways if they listen to it. So I appreciate it, Renan. Yeah. I hope they, uh, they want to join our teams. Ashes forts and uh, Godspeed alike will carry the torch to the future, man. Light, light us out of the dark ages that we had previously. That's right. <laughs> get her done. You're I done. like how you got the surf a lot low, or I was going to say lingo down too. That was awesome. No, I, I don't even, maybe it's just something I do now. I don't know. Shred on dude. <laughs> That's right. So, okay, dude, well, I'm going to, we'll finish this up and uh, we'll catch you when we catch you. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Man.